Welcome back to the channel. For some reason, the first few seconds of my review are missing, in which I simply say that before I review Heretics of Dune, I'm going to talk briefly about the books in the series before this one, and I start by speaking about Dune. What happens when plans of centuries of millennia get subverted by chaotic free choice? Dune Messiah is the falling action of Dune, and we learn about the fate of Paul Atreides, his, his wife, and his children, his sister. Children of Dune is a completion of this, this trilogy, and it sets mankind up for the era of Leto II, the God Emperor, which is the title of the fourth book. But there's a 3,500 year gap between the end of the third book and the fourth book. And I've reviewed God Emperor of Dune. You'll see it in the links at the, in the, in, in the description of the video. A lot of people didn't like it. It's uh, a lot of talking. It's a lot of philosophy, not a lot of action, which is not what's going on here. So another 1500 years passes after the death of the God Emperor, and we have the, we have Heretics of Dune. And uh, I suppose that's one thing that if people didn't like God Emperor, and they didn't like the, say, the philosophical focus, and they wanted to see a bit more of the action, you're going to get more of that here, especially in the second half of the book. So if you felt that was missing and you're not going to get that anymore, then I would just encourage you to take a look here that if you gave up on the, on the six book series, please give heretics a try. I think you will, you will potentially get back into it. I said before that I didn't know how Herbert was going to keep us engaged across thousands of years, because part of how you read a book is identifying with characters, wanting to know what happens to them, wanting to see the, the good guys succeed, the bad guys punished. And how do you do that over thousands of years? Well, the trick is we do that through the Atreides bloodline. So we see the Atreides bloodline recurring, and we identify in part with those. One of the main characters in, in this book, uh, Bashar Teg, is not only part of the Atreides bloodline, he's said to bear a strong resemblance to Leto I. Uh, he's recognized by Duncan Idaho, once again, a clone known in this series as a Gola. How are we able to connect? We have Duncan Idaho in book one, and we have Duncan Idaho here in book five, and I'm pretty certain we'll have him in book six as well. We also have the Benny Jesuit. So the Benny Jesuit have been with us since book one. They're going to be with us all the way through book six. And they're part of what I would consider potentially the biggest theme of Dune, which is power and control. Who is in power? Who is in control? Who is content to appear to be in power? And who is intent on actually holding the power? And in Book 5, the Bene Gesserit come up against a very formidable opponent in the Honored Matres, which, as best as I can surmise, and I haven't dug too deeply into this, these are potentially descendants of subverted Bene Gesserit that went out into the scattering, that the big explosion of exploration that happened after Leto had purposely, purposely repressed the human race for thousands of years, I think in order to create this great explosion, this great curiosity, and then see what would happen when, when people came back. He, he foresaw all of this. Um, but what do we see? We also see what happens as time, thousands of years pass, names change, Arrakis becomes Ruckus, and we even have names uh, of, of, of different, um, different words for the Fremen. You have this, this change of, of culture over thousands of years, and, and, that, and that makes a lot of sense. And, and part of the, the epic span of the series allows you to take in these ideas in the space necessary in order to see not just intergenerational change, but change over millennia, you need to have that space. And I think Herbert knew that there's also underlying the question of technology. We had the Butlerian Jihad alluded to much, much earlier, but how does technology play a role in not just seizing power, which is what's going on here, but in the way society develops, does human existence have a separate existence from the machines or are they necessarily intertwined? Can we never get away from the fact that we're going to want labor saving devices, which become ever more intelligent, which then necessarily potentially come into conflict with us as they, they gain 
prescience, they gain awareness, sorry, not prescience, they gain awareness, they gain the desires that we as humans have. So all of these things are discussed in the book and much more. Major beef I have with the book is towards almost the very end, we have this very um, explicit scene between Duncan Idaho and one of these honored matres. Now, the power that the honored matres have is a sort of sexual control, uh, which they then use to subvert civilizations and, and, and control them, which in a sense is a very interesting commentary. We live in the age of Jeffrey Epstein, it was, you know, way, way after Frank Herbert's time, but we do know the power of blackmail and the power related to honey traps. Uh, I think it's clear now Epstein was a controlled uh, honey trap with at least one agency behind him, one intelligence agency behind him for blackmail purposes. But um, it so Herbert's commentary is relevant. Does he need to get as explicit? No. And when you get to that part of the text, feel free to just, it's like a couple pages and you can just get past it. It's effectively Idaho countering the power that is trying to be exerted on him. Um, and I, I don't understand Herbert is much more subtle about this in earlier books in the series. And somehow here he's decided he's not going to be, it's a disappointing part of it unnecessary, but um, I don't think it takes away. I think it, I don't think it ruins the book. I just think it's something you can skip over. And for me, it's a perfect setup for the final book. So the final book's right after this chronologically, so we're not jumping forward thousands of years. And I'm fascinated to see how are we going to deal with all these tensions? How is this going to resolve? And I suspect, knowing Herbert, he's going to leave some, some things unresolved, which then sets us up for potentially reading the Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson series. Now, if you don't know about those, which I might talk about in the final review of this original series when I do Chapter House, which I'll be starting soon, is... This is Herbert's oldest son. He grew up with these texts. He looked at his father's notes. And it's unfair to expect people to write the way that Herbert did. So I think part of the, pu the purest argument against the, the Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert universe is, well, it's not as good as Herbert, and et cetera. Well, of course it can't be. But I do think what he's trying to do is build out this universe that his father had a vision for, and he's just being faithful to that. And so sometimes someone who's just a faithful engineer who's continuing to do the plans, they're not necessarily going to feel as free to invent as the original person. Whether that's good or bad is indifferent, I think. They are legitimate building it's out of the universe, and I'm certainly going to check them out. And we'll see whether this series continues. Um, if you look at book reviews on YouTube, you're going to find... Uh, lots of reviews for Dune. S some reviews for Dune Messiah it starts to drop off Children of Dune, really starts to drop off of God Emperor. And by the time you're here at Heretics, there's very few, and I suspect there's going to be even fewer for Chapter House. Part of that just might be series fatigue. By the time you get to the fifth book uh, of six, people have dropped off for any number of reasons. The reason I think I'm with the series and I'm going to finish the series is because I appreciate and like what Herbert is, tr is doing and is trying to do in the series. And... Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Now I'm going to get to the last book, and I encourage you to do so. And if you felt kind of out of the game after God Emperor, please let me encourage you to potentially get back into the game by checking out Heretics. As always, if you like this review um, and you want to encourage someone else who's maybe waiting for the Denny Villeneuve uh, release, uh, part two of uh, the Dune adaptation to film, this might be a good time for you to get on a, a reading kick with a friend or two and get through this series potentially before the films, uh, the second film comes out. Um, hit like, hit subscribe. If you'd like to say thank you, feel free to send a super thanks. Uh, if you'd really like to get more engaged with the channel, if you'd like to go back and check out other videos, please feel free. You can become a patron, my Patreon, or become a member of the YouTube channel. You'll get early releases to videos like this, as well as the ability, there's the Amazon wish list there as well, to suggest books. I send them up my way to bump up to the front of the line. I can't guarantee that that will happen, but I will certainly give more consideration to one of my patrons and my members than I will to a random commenter. But do feel free to comment. I'm always looking forward to suggestions in the comment box from people who have read so much more than me, have so many more insights. I learned so much from, from the comments. So thank you for that. As always, enjoy your reading.